Hi folks, Tall Tom here. It's a beautiful day in March and I uh, thought I would use this opportunity to do some car work. So today I'm repairing or rather replacing my brake rotors on my Scion XB. This is a 2006 model. The brake rotors, they got a problem. When you hit the brakes you feel this, uh, this lunging of the car that uh, decelerates as the car decelerates and that's a surefire sign that you've got a problem with your brake rotors. Uh, this can be caused by a number of things. Uh, one of them is over tightening of the lug nuts. When you get your tires replaced or something, sometimes the the, the power wrench will uh, be set too high of a torque and they can cause a warping of your rotors that way. Another way is just really hard, heavy braking can cause the rotors to overheat and warp. So uh, there's, there's a problem with them. You can have them what's called turned, which is when they shave the rotors to even them back out again. But I found that if you're going to go through the trouble, you might as well just pick up some new ones. They're really not that expensive, and you got a brand new set on your car. So let me show you what a, a rotor looks like. So this is a brake rotor. This is the new one. Um, it just slides over the lug nuts, and uh, your brake pads squeeze this right here to stop the car. Um, the surface of this needs to be extremely smooth and parallel to have smooth braking. And when your rotors get warped, uh, part of this will be bent or uh, thinned, um, twisted, anything like that can cause a problem when you brake. You can feel that vibration in your the front of your car. And not, not only is it annoying, but the vibrations can put wear and tear on all the uh, connectors in the front of your car and the, the tie rod in, and steering system, all of that takes a whole lot more abuse because of all the vibration every time you brake. So this problem can lead to more problems if you don't address it. So we're going to address it today. So let's get started. Before we get started, I'm going to go over a list of things that you're going to need for this project. Obviously, you're going to need a new set of brake pads from the auto parts store, a set of rotors, a new set from your auto parts store, a type of jack to jack up the car, brake cleaner, which can be found at your local auto parts store, a big hammer, a ratchet and a set of metric sockets, a 17 millimeter and 14 millimeter wrench, also a pair of channel lock pliers would be a good idea, probably some rubber gloves, a set of jack stands, this will be used to hold up the car while you work, and probably some work gloves if you don't want to get your mitts dirty. Also don't forget you're going to need your tire iron to uh, fight off any criminals that may come by and also to take your lug nuts off. You want to make sure your car is parked on a level surface, like a carport, driveway, or garage, preferably a paved surface. If you do not have a paved driveway, like myself, you can park it on a board or something. You're going to want something hard and level to jack the car up and put the jack stands on. Um, plus it gives you a nice surface to work around because it's flat and level and so forth. So. It's a safety thing and it's a, it's a convenience thing. It's a, don't work on a hill or try to do this out in the grass somewhere. It's just not recommended. Now I'm using what's called a scissor jack. Uh, a lot of cars come with these. And you can also use a racing jack. It doesn't matter. The important thing is you want to make sure you put it where the manual in your car says you should jack the car up. It's a certain point near the front and the rear tire that it recommends you put your jack. Uh, it's just designed to hold the weight in that location. If you put it in the wrong place, could dent something, damage a car, it may not even hold and the car would slip. You don't want anything slipping. Safety first. So let's take a look under here. I'll show you where to put this one. As you can see here, there is a uh, support beam right here. It's the perfect place to put the jack if it's right around that. And once again, make sure the jack is on a good solid flat surface. I got a board under it. If you got a gravel driveway or something, it's really important to do that. Then you just want to get it snug and get ready to jack the car up. Just take it nice and slow. Keep an eye on everything, make sure nothing's moving. Make sure a parking brake is set too. Now this little device is called a jack stand. It's just an extra safety precaution and it's a way you can keep the car propped up and move the, the jack out of the way and use it like on the other side if you're raising the whole front up. So it's just a little safer way to keep the car up because the, uh, the jack does okay, but you don't want to trust it. Having a jack stand is a real good idea. 
All right, so we're just going to slide the jack stand up under there. Get it lined up. Make sure it's stable. And now we can lower the car under the stand. And I'm going to leave both the jack and the jack stand here just for some extra security. Make sure this isn't going to fall on me. All right, let's take the wheel off. I've got some aftermarket tires on here. They have a, uh, an adapter stud. Most cars just have the standard lugs on there. So uh, I'm going to take this off. Just kind of break them loose. Your free little tire. And we don't need that anymore. And now you have the easily accessible uh, brake rotor and caliper system. This is called the caliper and the rotor. And then inside of the caliper here on either side are the brake pads and uh, squeeze on the rotor. This rotor is probably the original that came on the car. And it's from 2006, so it's got a lot of miles on the car. I think 111,000. That's not too bad, but um, it's a good time to do this. So, um, so what we got to do next is get the caliper off of the rotor, and this should just come right off. Um, there's, there's really no other attachments or anything. It just sits right on there. When you bolt the tire on, that's kind of what holds the the rotor in place. So uh, we got to start by removing some bolts from the back of this. Now is probably a good time to mention you're probably going to want to just do a visual inspection of the area here. You want to look at your rubber boots around your CV joints and all. See if they got any cracks or look like they're in bad shape. Also want to look for uh, any problems with your lines. These uh, rubber brake lines that feed the hydraulics to the caliper, they can start to uh, get cracked and look bad. These don't look too bad. I'm not uh, worried about them. Everything looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and start taking off the uh, caliper bolts. There's two bolts here, and they are 13 millimeter. So you just get your 13 millimeter ratchet and start taking them out. These are usually pretty tight. And they're not going to come without a fight because there is another nut we got to hold in place right here. So let me get a wrench for that. All right, so the uh, nut right here is 14 millimeter. The bolt back here is also 14 millimeter. So it's not 13 millimeter, it's 14 millimeter. So you can see if I turn this, this wants to move. So you got to hold this in place while turning this. And now it is free. Easy enough. Same for this one. Try to stay out of the shadow here. And you can see it's already trying to turn, turn out. Just to make it a little easier, I'm going to put that back in there so it doesn't move on me. There we go. That's how you skin a knuckle. So be careful. Alright, so we got both of the caliper bolts out. See those there? And that frees the caliper to just come right off. And when you press the brake pedal, hydraulic fluid comes in here and presses this metal ring against the brake pads. These just float in here. 
So just carefully lay that there. You don't put a lot of stress on that hose, but it should be all right hanging there. And these are your brake pads. We're also going to be replacing these just because it's a good time to do it. They're actually not that bad of shape, but they're not that expensive, and I've got some new ones, so I'm going to use the new ones. This pad, you can see right here that I've got quite a bit left. Um, I think I replaced these a couple years ago, so they're really not in that bad of shape. But if I'm doing new rotors, pads aren't that expensive. I'm just going to go ahead and do the whole shebang and uh, replace the pads as well. And when the pads get really thin, you see this piece of metal here? You ever hear brakes screeching down the road? This is a, this actually is supposed to make that sound. That lets you know, hey buddy, you're about to run out of pad. You need to uh, do something. So uh, that's your uh, screech sounder right there. Horrible sound, but uh, get your attention. So that's the purpose of that. So that's the pads. Now the actual caliper holder is going to have to be removed as well because I can't get the rotor off because this is in the way. So that's got to be removed. Um, there's a couple of bolts back here that I'm going to have to remove to get that off. So that's the next step. Okay, I moved you around back so you can see what I'm getting at. The, uh, the smaller caliper bolts that I took loose earlier, uh, they just came right out of here and held the, uh, the caliper on. Now we have to take the whole bracket off that held the caliper on, take it loose from the car. There are two larger 17 millimeter bolts and those have to come out. Let's see. 17 millimeter, let me get my ratchet. Oops. And these are going to be hard to get off. I brought a helper. There we go. Just a little tap of the hammer. And I'll break the other one loose. And there we go. Once you break it, it comes off pretty easy. Do it my fingers. Well, almost. Still love it when a bolt's like too loose for the wrench, but too tight for your fingers. There we go. There's one. Just a note: I'm wearing gloves now because uh, brake dust is pretty grimy stuff. Um, Plus, if it bang your knuckles, you got gloves on, it doesn't hurt as bad. Some people like to work without gloves. Um, it's up to you. Some of the chemicals you use, like brake cleaner, which we'll be using later, you don't want to really let that stuff soak into your skin. So using rubber gloves in that situation is a good idea. So we've taken the bolts loose, and that just comes right off. And now our uh, rotor is free. So now that I have freed the rotor up, it should just come right off. But it wants to be a pain today. A little tap. And it's not coming off. Ah, there we go. A little tip, if it's really on there hard, there's a couple of holes here with threads. You can actually thread a bolt in there and it will force it away from the, uh, the car. So there we go. There's the old rotor. I'm looking at it. And at first glance, it doesn't look too bad, but you can see these unusual line things. Um, it should be uh, wearing evenly and you can just tell by visual inspection that something's going on that's not even. It's hard to tell by the naked eye, but you can feel it in the pedal when you hit it. So, so that's the old one. Let's put the new one on. The new one just slides right on. Almost too easy. And now we do the reverse. We just start putting everything back together. Now, there's one other issue. Um, this caliper here 
needs to be reset and uh, there's an easy way to do that you uh, take a pair of channel locks and a grab right here and squeeze it shut so I'm going to show you how to do that hopefully these are wide enough just barely and the reason you got to do this you can see that it's it's pushing the fluid back out of the cylinder let's do it real carefully you don't want, you don't want to nick this rubber right here because that would allow dirt to get into the cylinder and then cause problems and the rest. So just do it gently. Ooh, be careful. And uh, squeeze that in. The reason you got to do that is your new brake pads are going to be thicker and they won't fit in there with the caliper sticking out like that. So try pushing it from here. That's probably good enough. Just get in as far as you can. Okay, something else I need to mention at this point. Uh, you want to get some brake cleaner. Um, there's a couple reasons for this. One, these brand new rotors from the factory, they have kind of an oil on them. And I think that's to prevent it from corroding while it's waiting at the auto parts store for you to purchase it. This oil is not a good thing to have on a brake drum. If you can imagine it, it's uh, something you want to get off of there because you're trying to stop the car. You don't want this to be oily. So the brake cleaner helps clean the, uh, the oil off. And plus, you know, there's a lot of there's griminess here um, on the calipers and uh, all inside of the uh, area here. And uh, all this is just covered in brake dust. So uh, this helps break all that up and clean it up real nice. So I'll put down some plastic, put on some gloves, because you really don't want this stuff, if you read the warnings, it's not good to get this stuff soaked into your skin. You don't want to breathe it. So, uh, you know, keep your face back when you're cleaning these parts up and just spray it a little bit. some clips inside of here. Uh, I got some new ones with my new brake pad so you can just take these off. We're not going to need those. And, uh, we'll spray some cleaner on that too. And this stuff evaporates pretty quickly. So don't be afraid to be liberal with it. Check out the new brick pads. Here's the new clips. One of them has the uh, these little tabs right here, and one of them does not. I think that's though that it holds itself in place. This one is on the lower side, so it's it's going to naturally stay where it's supposed to from just gravity. I'm just doing the reverse of what I did earlier. Taking our 17 millimeter bolts and putting them back. Get them finger tight. On the back there. And tighten them up. I'm sure there's a factory torque setting I'll just get them as snug as you can without going crazy. All right, now something I probably should have mentioned earlier, there is a left and a right-handed side, or I guess you want to say back and front side brake pad. You just want to pay attention when you're taking them off. Um, 
In this case, the one with the screecher sound uh, device goes on the back side, and the uh, other one obviously goes on the front side. So uh, make sure you don't get them backwards. I'm going to slide those in. It's being honorary. There we go. You can see it matches the curve of the rotor. Put the front one in. There we go. Got a nice fit there. Now we take our caliper. And as you see, because I squeezed, and I don't know if you could have see, could see that earlier, but basically this, this ring, it's a hydraulic ring, I squeeze here to push that straight in as far as I can, because like I said, these new pads are going to be thicker, and that thing was used to being in a little further, so bringing it on out is a good idea, because it makes this part a lot easier, it just slides right over. And also, these bolts have an adjustable system and just push in and out and all that itself adjusts as the brakes wear so you just get the caliper lined up and get your bolts get them started this one started get them hand tight We're going to go back to our 14 millimeters on our ratchet as well as our wrench. And you want to use your wrench. Hold up, that's the wrong wrench. There it is. Because what you're trying to do is tighten this bolt or this nut. Sorry, this bolt against this nut, and you want this nut to move if you're trying to tighten against it. So just get it kind of snug. You don't have to go crazy on that one either. And this all feels kind of loose at the moment, but that's because the calipers have not uh, closed back up on it. When you hit that pedal in there, everything's going to tighten up real nice. This feels loose because the tire hasn't been put back on. The lug nuts hold this very firmly once you tighten that up. So that's about it. I'm just going to hit this one more time. Gonna clean all this up a little bit. And there you have it. All that's left now is to put the tire back on, tighten your lug nuts up, lower the car, then move to the other side and do the same thing. It's the exact same procedure. Just make sure you, you take it slow and easy. Well, that's about it for changing uh, the front brake rotors on a 2006 Scion XB. Most cars are the same when they got disc brakes. It's going to be a little different in there, maybe different size bolts and measurements, but process is the same. Just be careful when you jack up vehicles. There's always a chance something could fall. Make sure everything's very level and secure and uh, try to keep clear in case something does fall so that you don't get injured. And uh, you can save a lot of money. You don't need to pay a mechanic to do this um, if you can do it yourself. So I hope this helps somebody out. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.